listening, he mentioned that I can see the Brung guards all sitting around, um, listening and having church through the, uh, through the live service streaming, and that was exactly uh, what we were doing. Uh, it was our first time experiencing that, and uh, it, is, it is an awesome blessing. However, it, it doesn't replace being here. Uh, it's a great asset that I think if people can't be here for whatever reason or out of town and for people that just would happen onto the site, great. But uh, I, I even realized a, a new meaning to uh, what I am talking about this morning, the title, Branching Out, Connection is Everything. Just coming here this morning and have a chance to connect with some of you and what was already poured into me this morning from my brothers and sisters couldn't be done online. Couldn't be done through a computer monitor or a television screen. So while that, that resource is great and we were fed last Sunday, we weren't able to connect with all of you in a way that, uh, that I've already been blessed by this morning. So I'm just so thankful for, for my church family, my brothers and sisters, and for what you mean to me. Um, last year, I was uh, talking in a theme out of the book of Zechariah, specifically chapter 4, verse 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And um, as, as I uh, realized my opportunity to preach here the second Sunday of 2019, I was kind of digging around back in that text because I had a theme for most of the year, um, looking at how God's spirit was using these people to do a work way bigger than they could accomplish by themselves. Um, they were post-exile prophets, Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi, and their job was to speak words of encouragement and, and words of correction and rebuke, if need be, to these people who were assigned a, a, a big job. They, they led a group of people from captivity uh, in, in Babylon back to Jerusalem and back to rebuild the temple, the center of worship for God's people. And that was no small task. And these prophets had a, a major job of speaking words of encouragement. And, you know, when I think about the, the position of a prophet in those times, that was a hard, hard mantle to carry. Many times what they had to say wasn't easy to hear. It wasn't going to be something that people would applaud and appreciate and say, thanks for that word today, brother. We really appreciate you pointing out the error of our ways and how we've sinned greatly and how God's going to judge us. Um, but the, the words of Isaiah and the words of Jeremiah and the words of all the minor prophets uh, were so needed in the times that they were given. They were from God to his people through these, through these men. And one of the things, though, that they got to do was speak to the coming of Jesus Christ, speak to the coming Messiah, that an eternal king is coming, that, that you've been ruled by kings and some have honored me and done well and we've prospered and some have led you away from me and judgments had to come and you've been taken captive and it's been this roller coaster ride, God's people and, and the Lord. But there's coming a day when a king is coming and he will rule over you and over the entire world and he will set up his eternal kingdom. He will be king and he will be priest and he will serve both seats and there will be harmony between the two. And <clears throat> that's something that Zachariah mentioned and as I was kind of going back and looking at at what I was talking about last year, I, I come across a word, I come across a description of, of Jesus and something I've, I've never really studied before and looked at, but it was mentioned more than one time uh, by these Old Testament prophets, and it's describing Jesus as a branch. So I want to I wanna read our, our first three verses today from three different prophets describing Jesus as the branch. And the Lord said through Zechariah, tell him, tell Joshua, the current priest of the people, that this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch. So he's, he's presenting Jesus now. And he will branch out from his place, and he will build the temple of the Lord. And that, that theme of branching out, that, that Jesus being born where he was in Bethlehem, in a small little speck on the globe, but over time, and as we've seen, will branch out to the four corners of the world. So that's, that's one thing we're going to look at in terms of Jesus being the branch. Well, a couple generations earlier, this wasn't the first time that uh, the branch was mentioned, Jeremiah the prophet said this, 
The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely, will do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous branch. So we're going to look at our connection to this branch and, and our righteousness that we receive through this branch. And then, a couple of generations before that, Isaiah, I believe, was the first to call him a branch. And he says it this way in Isaiah 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. This sounds an awful lot like what Pastor Nick read this morning. Uh, this is in, in Isaiah 61, but also Jesus quoted this when he went into the temple in Luke 4 that we heard this morning. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. So three different prophets refer to this coming Messiah as a branch, a righteous branch, one that will branch out, and one that will bear fruit. Well, looking up this word branch and looking up the, the Hebrew root of it, Jesus, the branch, the word they used is sigmach, Simak, and it means a sprout or to sprout. It means a shoot or to shoot up. It means new growth, and it means increase. And so this word speaks so much of, of Jesus and who he is. Number one, and I want to I show you this first picture, because when I thought about a shoot out of the stump of Jesse. Now, Jesse was the father of David. And of course, David's kingdom, this, this shows that Jesus is of the human ancestry in the line of King David, whose father was Jesse. And this is, this is what Isaiah uh, points out. Interesting, too, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Jesse was from Bethlehem. So this stump represents something that's been cut off, something that's been judged, and this is the kingdom led by man led by human kings some were good some were bad but god was going to to judge that those kings and their leadership and then kind of start over and this picture shows what isaiah depicts as they shoot as life coming from something that's been judged something that really looks like it has no life in it so isaiah shows in this picture where jesus is from from the line of david and of course he promises well here's another description that he gives in isaiah 53 who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He, that's Jesus, grew up before him like a tender shoot. Looks just like that picture that we saw, right? Like a root out of dry ground, something barren, something dead, something where nothing else is really growing, no life. But a tender root sprouts up, shoots up, and that's what Jesus did some four to 500 years later, of course, from from the time of Zechariah's prophecy. He had no beauty, no majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. So Isaiah, in calling him a branch, is once saying where he came from, the line of David, and it's also uh, a guarantee that David's throne will last for an eternity, and this is what was said through, through in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel 7, 16. Your house, that's David, your house and your kingdom will endure forever, before me. Your throne will be established forever. And Jesus coming from that line guaranteed that it's a forever thing, that it's an eternal thing. But also, this branch indicates kind of the purpose and the potential of Jesus and, and in his power. And this next picture of the trees, the, I tried to find massive trees with massive branches. So it's not only an indication of where he's from, from the line that he came, but the purpose that, that he came with, that, that he brings an eternal life from heaven to earth, that his kingdom will grow and will expand, that it will branch out, that he brings a power, and if we're connected to that power, it's an ever-increasing power, an ever-increasing kingdom, an ever-increasing influence from one little spot on the globe in Bethlehem to the outermost parts of the world as we know today. The gospel has been taken. This thing has branched that far to cover the globe. And when the branch came into your life, when and if you felt its effect in your heart, 
the kingdom grew a little bit more. The kingdom expanded that much further, an ever-increasing kingdom. See, we joined a living branch. We became a part of the body of Christ. The church is a living and breathing organism. And, it, and it's something that is continually advancing and branching out and changing and moving. And we are branches now attached to the branch. If you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and you are a child of God, you are a branch attached to the branch. You are a part of the body of Christ and he is the head. And this, of course, was one of the main themes that Jesus wanted his disciples to know before he left them. So now we fast forward from the, the uh, prophet's words of Jesus as the branch to now he himself on earth talking to his followers before he's about to go to the cross. He paints this picture. In John 15, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you, so remain in me, and I also will remain in you. For no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine, and neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, or the branch, the branch, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. So I think it's all summarized for me today in saying this to you. And this is the, the word, this is the message that, that I've felt I'm supposed to give. It's, it's been one of the harder weeks for me in preparing how to give it or what else to give or how to package it. But it's this. 2019 is going to be for Church of the Rock and for you as a branch connected to Christ, a year of branching out. And I want you to receive that, because I believe truly that this is coming from the Lord. As Pastor Nick said, you didn't come to hear from me. The word from the Lord is 2019 for you will be a year of branching out. And I want you to chew on that, if you're willing, as you leave here, to wrestle with it, to see. Some, some are going to be obvious things that maybe you already know you're going to be branching out into and many things we don't even know or conceive yet, but God knows. Branching out of our own routines. Branching out of our same old patterns. Branching out of our comfort zones. Branching out of or, or further away from worldly, fleshly thinking. Branching away from self-centered, egocentric living. That's part of it. And the other part is branching into new roles, new relationships, branching into new spheres of influence, that God is going to introduce new people into your life. Oh, by the way, you're going to meet somebody new in 2019. Your life's path is going to cross with somebody else's you didn't know before. And there's a reason for that. God's going to put you in a new sphere of influence, a greater sphere of influence, a new environment possibly, a new community, a new home, a new school. Some of our young people here today will be, will be in 2019 walking onto a college campus for the first time. Holy moly. <laughs> Branching into spirit-led living, Christ-centered, focused living. That life is going to sprout in barren places. And maybe this is relationships for you. There's going to be a shoot of new growth that's in a barren place that's been barren for years. And you're like, how did that even happen? I don't know. God is going to accomplish all of this. It's going to happen naturally. It's going to happen organically. I'm not saying this to you today to give you new things to, to go out and do. And it just feels like, oh. More energy, more time. No, nope, I'm okay. I'm good where I'm at. No. Our focus is not on what we can do more. Our focus is on staying connected more intimately to the branch. That is where it all is going to happen. It's going to naturally happen because that's the nature of who Jesus is. That's the nature of his kingdom. Our focus is on remaining, on staying connected. Five times in this 
In this excerpt, Jesus says to remain. The word is mino. Mino. And what that word means is to remain, to abide, to wait for or await, to tarry or to not depart or leave from. I think of when Jesus told his disciples in Acts 1, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Wait for the gift. Because that's really what you need if you're going to accomplish anything for me. So I just want to conclude today in, in talking about the importance that we stay connected, that we know, that we wait for, that we hold on and we remain and we abide. Number one, it ensures that we are healthy, that we are fed, that we get the spiritual nourishment that we have to have. Jesus said, man doesn't live on bread alone, but in every word that comes forth from his mouth, the spiritual nourishment we need. Our strength, what we have to have to thrive, is found in Christ alone, the branch. The power to grow doesn't come from ourselves. We're not going to reach out and, and branch into new areas in our own strength. Just like if this was a tool that you have in your toolbox and you need, the power for this tool to work and be effective doesn't come from itself. There's no power in and of itself. What it needs is to be plugged in. It needs to be connected to a power source. And when we get plugged in, when we abide, when we tarry and wait and, and go out when he says to go out and stay when he says to stay and connect with him on a daily basis, there's plenty of power to be had. But it comes from the connection that we have. And if there's a disconnect in this power source, there's no power. You're going to start to suffer in your spiritual health. There's going to be a, a power shortage, and all of a sudden, this tool can't do what it was designed to do. And this tool illustrates you and I in the hands of a great carpenter, in the hands of a one who's building something, doing something. We're just a tool. We're just a conduit. But we have to be connected. So there's a power source that can make the tool do what it's supposed to do. When we know, when we remain, when we abide, we ensure that we have something to give. Because you can't give what you do not have. Amen? You can't give up something if you don't, haven't received it. And if you try on your own and muster up the strength and go 180 miles an hour in a direction on your own, it's going to be short-lived. And it's going to lead to frustration. And it's not going to be an authentic thing. It's not going to feel like this is of God very long. You know, I remember when we flew back in 2000 and um, I think it was 2009, we took... We took a little trip to Florida. We took the kids, and we went to Disney for three days. It seemed like three years, but it was three days. <laughs> and the kids were young, and, and the three boys were old enough to have their own seat, but Balin had to sit on our lap. And, you know, nobody that flies likes to hear that whole scenario. Should the cabin pressure be lost or the plane start to go down or, you know, that this flotation device is going to pop out and the oxygen mask is going to come down? And how to handle I don't want to hear anything about that. I remember flying one time with my mom, and she, she gets really nervous about that. And I said, Mom, it's going to be okay. And, 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 and I said, if it's your time, it's your time, Mom. It, you know, just trust in the Lord. She goes, well, what if, it's, what if it's not my time, but it's the time of the guy next to me over here? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know about that one, Mom. God will, God will figure that out. <laughs> Good question. I'm your son. I'm not your pastor. Don't ask me those things. <laughs> anyway. I remember distinctly, you know, holding band that the, the stewardess shows that if, if oxygen masks drop and, you know, you need to breathe, your first inclination could be to put it on your child. But really what you need to do as the caregiver of someone who needs care is to put it on yourself first and to make sure that you have air so that you can continue to help those who need help. That if you pass out and, and something happens to you, then, then that's two people that are, gonna, that are gonna die because the child is dependent on you and if you don't have auction, you can't help them. And that, I remembered that as I was thinking about this week, that if we want to be that source of help and whatever the world needs, we first have to make sure we have something to help them with, something to give them, that we are in a good place. So we have to stay connected so that we have something to give. When we are connected, we are meeting the world from a place of power. And what's that power look like? Patience. We have patience to give. We, we can meet the world from a place of grace and mercy, from a place of understanding, 
we can meet the world from, from a, a place of joy and, and authentic peace. When, when we have that, then, then we can meet the world with that. We have that to offer. But if we don't have that, if we're not connected, then we don't have contentment to show the world true contentment. So when, when we know, then we can offer something to the world. Now, it's, it's something that's real and authentic that we have because it's just flowing through us. We're not, we're not making it up. As the branch is connected and as that sap travels up through the trunk of the tree, the vine that is Jesus, and it just flows through the branch. It's not ours that, 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 that we're showing. It's his. But we have it to show if we're connected. When we, when we abide, when we remain, we ensure that, that we are operating in the timing and the rhythm of God Almighty. That, that we're in step, if you will. You know, Paul said to the Galatians, since you live by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit. You know, opportunities are going to come our way, and they're going to come suddenly. They're going to come quickly. And you know, when you're operating in a timing and, and you're, you're walking with the Lord intimately, you can almost begin to anticipate and, and not, not assume, but you kind of know how this is going. You can feel something coming and you're going to be prepared in, in real time. You know that bracelet, what would Jesus do? Many times for me, it would say WWJHD. Like, what would Jesus, wait, 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 what would Jesus have done? That was it. I think about, what would Jesus have done? Like it's past tense, like I already missed the opportunity. What should I have done? Man, I wasn't quite ready for that. The opportunity to have a conversation or just to listen or to speak a word or to give some, some time, some money, some whatever God wanted to you know, promote through me one of his branches, was I ready for it? It came about so suddenly. So as we abide and as we remain, you know, we're ready for those timely moments you know, because God does work in times and seasons for everything. In a farming sense, there's a time to plant, and there's a time to prune, and there's a time to go out and, and, and harvest, and then there's time that's not time for that. So you, we begin to operate in his rhythm and in his timing, and we can begin to anticipate, here comes a moment, and I'm ready. Here comes a moment, and I'm ready. Number four. When we abide and remain, we ensure that there's an intensity to our love with the Father. Jesus goes on in this text. Oh, I had that picture of the connection. Do we have that picture? I just love this picture. Now, whether, whether you're uh, from the lineage of God's people, the Israelites, or whether you're one of us Gentiles that have been grafted in, the connection is, the connection is so important. I wanted to, I wanted to show that because to me that... That speaks so much of our, our relationship to the vine. But anyway, Jesus goes on in this text, in this, in this uh, picture of the grapevine. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. Remaining in his love, and then, a, and then a, a, another thought came to me of remaining in love in a relationship where you are in love. And Jesus talks about keeping his commands. It's not an obligation when you're in love. It's a want to. It's a desire. It's an impulse. It's an urge that I want to please this person, and I'm passionate about whatever pleases them I want to do. And I think that's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. When you obey, when you keep my commands, it's a sign of, be, of your love for the Father. So when we abide, when we know, when we remain, when we wait, we feel the full extent of this love, that it's not an obligation. You know, when you're in love, there, there's not this drifting apart, there's not this wondering, there's not, there, there's not a disconnect. There's a strong, vital connection, an intimacy, a closeness that's felt. And that's what Jesus is telling his disciples in this text. When you remain, you remain in that love, that intimate love. And there will be a want to, to please your Father. And finally, when we remain, when we abide, when we stay connected, it ensures that we have Christ's full and complete joy. In verse 11, he says, I've told you this. I've showed you this, this analogy of, of the vine and the branch and, and staying connected and remaining 
so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be what? Complete. Full and complete joy. You will never, I have never, been more satisfied, been more content, felt more rest, felt more relaxed, or let me just say felt happier than, than when I was walking intimately with Jesus. The things that I've got to experience in my life, success on, on the athletic field, or the making of friends, the marrying of a beautiful woman, having four beautiful children, getting to know all of you, all of it has fallen a little bit short in some way compared to the joy that Jesus has brought to my life. In the fullness of it, but more or less the duration of it. Because some things in life have made me really, really happy. And I felt really, really content for a short time. And then it kind of waned. And I wanted another taste of that and whatever it was. But Jesus lasts. Jesus uh, has a duration in this relationship that will never, never let us down. It's an ever-increasing relationship. So as we think about this, and I, and I just challenge you to chew on this and to trust it and to anticipate and expect how the branching out is going to go. And we're going to talk about uh, several things along the way uh, this year. I think Isaiah in chapter 9 summarizes it as, as good as anything. And I want to close with Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. And, and the first verse is a Christmas verse. It's read every year during Advent when we anticipate his coming. But the second verse really speaks to this branch's effect and through our life, the effect it's going to have in us. It, he says, For to us a child is born, a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, he will be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Listen to this. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that day on and forever. Here we are today reading this verse, proclaiming amen to that. 2,000 plus years later, we are still proclaiming amen. It's forever. And finally... How is this going to happen? The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Whatever branching out is going to look like for Church of the Rock, whatever new things God's going to take us into, wherever growth is going to happen, an increase is going to happen, and life is going to shoot up and sprout up in new places, it's the zeal of the Lord that's going to do it. So we can relax and rest on that fact. Would you pray with me, brothers and sisters? <clears throat> God, we just want to hold on to this word. Lord, it is our lifeline. It is our life, our sustenance, our nourishment, our health. We thank you for the promises spoken long ago, the ones that we have seen come to fruition and the ones that we believe are going to come to fruition. Lord Jesus, you are our branch. You are our lifeline. You are our power. You are our sustenance. You supply all that we need. Show us, Lord, this day <clears throat> where we have maybe disconnected ourselves a little bit, where there might be a crack in that connection, God, so that, that we can just seek you more fully and have healing there and, and just let the power flow, your power through our life. God, I just, I just thank you for this word. I'm believing it. I'm believing it for Church of the Rock. I'm believing it for Mark Brungard, and I'm believing it for all that are hearing it today. That this coming year, Lord, will be a year of branching out into new things, new opportunities, new influence. It'll be a year of growth. It'll be a year of increase. That your kingdom will go forward. And that your zeal, your power, will be the thing that gets it all done. Might we be just an instrument in your hands, God, with your power flowing through us to this world. We ask it, we proclaim it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen.